Ho. <laughs> Nothing bad happened. Oh my god. 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 Oh my goodness. It's right. It's right out there. You guys, if I don't make it through this. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. It's time for more Beast Class content. And in case you don't know what Beast Class is, it's... See that thing over there with the 12-inch, 13-inch props and the 12S battery? That's a Beast Class quadcopter. It's like X-Class, but for freestyle. Well, anyway, I built a Beast Class quad, and then I flew it, and then it fell out of the air and crashed. So, in this video, we're going to talk about why that happened, what I did to fix it, and then we're going to do some pit tuning on it. Yeah, pit tuning of a 12S 13-inch. Then we'll do some freestyle, too. Sit, dude. In case you haven't been following along on this epic journey, the last thing that happened was that I maidened the beast and it fell out of the air. It, like we had a desync and it crashed. And if you want to catch up on uh, four build videos and then a somewhat anticlimactic maiden video, there's a link in the video description to the playlist for this, this whole series. But for those of you who have been following along, what you really want to know is why? What, why did it crash and how did I fix it? And the leading candidate for the answer is that the capacitors, the big electrolytic capacitors that you absolutely must use on these APD ESCs, that th the way they solder to the sort of edge of the PCB is a little bit unfamiliar to me. I double and triple checked them and they all looked good to me, but after the crash, one of the capacitors had come loose. And my best get, and the capacitor, and the, the ESC was dead, totally dead, wouldn't even, wouldn't even turn on. So, the leading theory is that I soldered the capacitor badly and the, it killed the ESC and that's why the quad crashed. Here's what I've done to fix it and get it into the air for this session. Number one, I re-soldered all of the capacitors on the ESCs and re-double, triple checked that they were okay. Number two, I originally didn't install ground wires because I never do that on my littler quads and I've just always learned that that's not necessary. Well. Every single person I've talked to said that that was a mistake. You must run ground wires, signal ground, in addition to your power ground. On smaller quads, just use power ground and it's fine. And you must twist, like barber pole, the signal ground, the telemetry wire, and the, and the signal wire together to help limit some of the electrical interference. So those are the two major things I did. The other thing I've done is I've got the filters, the, the gyro and the D-term filter down at 40 hertz. That also was not done during the last video, although I don't think that caused the uh, crash. So let's, let's fly it. And we're going to do some PID tuning in this video. And I want to warn you, like all things Beast Class, I am not an authority. This is not a tutorial. This is a follow along with me as we all learn together. But I want you guys to know what you're getting. When I'm speaking with authority, I will speak with confidence. And if it feels like as you watch this video that I'm just kind of going, I don't know, let's try this, let's try that. That's because I am. And if that's what you want out of the experience, then this is the video for you. If you want a tutorial about how to tune an X class, beast class, this is not that. Let's go. So here's my first flight, and I've got the PIDs for you guys to follow along with in the upper right. We're just going to fly it. We're going to feel out sharp turns, looking for prop wash oscillation, and we're going to see how it holds its nose when I blip the throttles. These are Betaflight default PIDs, but I've reduced them. Oh, 
<laughs> Get out of here, rabbits. <laughs> I've reduced the pits by about one third uh, just to start from something safe. And the first thing I'm gonna notice is right there, as I punch the throttle, we get this kind of oscillation. So basically what I'm trying to figure out is how hard can I push this before it starts doing something crazy and unexpected because I don't want to go nutso on it and have it fall out of the sky and crash itself. And we got to solve that, that little, if I can't jam the throttle without it oscillating like that, something isn't right. Now my first guess is that this is I-term oscillation because it is so slow. And so here I've lowered the roll and pitch I gain to see if that helps fix the problem. Remember that it's normal for an arm to dip a little bit on, a, on many quadcopters when you punch the throttle. But this is not just a dipping arm. This is actually a sort of an oscillation. So this is not just going down up. It's going down up, down up, down up, down up, down up. The slowness of it typically would be associated with eye gain. Normally P-term or D-term is gonna oscillate faster than that. And so I've lowered the eye gain to see if it's, if it's excess eye gain causing oscillation. That doesn't happen a lot on normal quads, eye term oscillation, but who knows with this guy. We also see right there, we're mostly getting decent handling on sharp turns, but we're still getting some oscillation there. Mostly when I punch the throttle though, not just when I do the sharp turns. So lowering the eye gain didn't fix it. That means that this is not eye term oscillation and I've raised the eye gain back up. I actually want the eye gain to be pretty freaking high on this guy. I want this guy to fly really stiff and in control. I've also raised the D gain here. I had the D gains down at 10 just because I didn't want to take a chance on smoking a motor or getting too much noise and having the quad fall out of the sky. But prop wash handling was pretty good and maybe what we've got is a P term oscillation and then Raising D will help tame the P-term oscillation. See me doing some sharper turns here, working the throttle. Oh, and uh, honestly, it's almost worse. So, what next? So now I'm thinking maybe P is too high and we're getting some kind of P-term oscillation and raising D didn't fix it, I don't know. So I'm gonna lower P really far down and I'm gonna lower D and I'm just gonna see what that does. And the quad is basically out of control. Let's see how it's just wobbling. That's just gonna get worse and worse and worse. That is low, low P where there's just so little authority that the PID controller can barely keep the quad in the air. Nope, we found the limit. And what you're watching is basically how I learned to pid tune five inch quads. Just change one thing at a time until you find a limit where things are clearly not right. So now I'm gonna start working P up. D is still at 10, I hasn't changed. I'm gonna raise P on roll, pitch, and yaw and try to find the place where it seems to behave the best. Just keep working it up. Raising P seems to have made the oscillation sharper, higher frequency. Uh, so maybe we're moving the right direction and we need more P and more D. Here P is the same as it was in the previous flight, but we've raised D from 10 to 35. Uh, tuning P and D is about finding the right balance between them, but also the right sort of absolute magnitude. And in fact, it does seem, we're still getting a little oscillation, but it's smaller in magnitude, higher in frequency, and that suggests maybe we're moving the right direction. Another one of my pit tuning philosophies is if you're doing something and it makes an improvement, keep doing it until it starts getting worse. So raising D made an improvement. D was at 35, let's raise it to 45. Nothing else has changed, just a little more D gain. Let's see how it does. Oh. Well, boy, it's still there, but I think this may be the best we've seen it looking so far. Let's just try some flying. Let's just see how, since we're adding D gain, we should really be checking the motor temperatures here and I'm being very careless by not checking them. Don't wanna smoke the motors, although the quad is really heavily filtered. That's another thing I'm wondering, with such a low cutoff frequency on D, maybe we'll need a lot more magnitude of D gain in order to see the effects just because it's so filtered and so delayed. Mm, seems like we're doing pretty good here. What next? Now for this one, I get a little, I'm being a little bit of a cowboy here because I raised D. Raising D has made things better, so let's raise D some more. 
raising P like three steps ago made things a little better. So let's uh, raise P some more. And um, since we're dipping an arm, let's raise I as well. Let's just, I just basically raise all the PIDs. Yeah, this is not, um, this is really, you should change one thing at a time or maybe one P on pitch and roll at a time. This is kind of just, anyway, let's see what the effect is. <clears throat> And here we continue that direction, raising them all just a little bit more to see if we end up with an additional improvement. My gut feeling is that I'm gonna want I to be pretty high on this quad. I'm gonna want this quad to be pretty stiff. Now it's just so big that it's kinda, oh, did it get better? No, no, it's worse, it's worse. So we, we need to back off. We've gone too far, we need to back off and, and, and see what we can do next. So here we're gonna go back to the methodical approach of changing one thing at a time. We're gonna leave I and D where they were and lower P and see if we can get it back good again. Just, I'm leaving I alone because my gut feeling is that I'm gonna want it to be high. Let's see, you know, it's still doing it. My gut feeling is that these oscillations are P-term oscillations, even though they're slow. I think that's because it's a big quadcopter with big heavy motors and props. So I'm gonna try raising D a little bit more. That's what you do when you have P-term oscillations. Nope. Nope, nope. Like four steps ago, we had it pretty good. Now we've kind of just, mm, yeah. So we're gonna take D back down to try and sort of find that place where it was good. If I was writing these things down in the field, that would be easier. Thank goodness I've got all these black box lugs to look at now and see which one was the best. <laughs> yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad, it's not the best, but it's not the worst. So now we've taken D down just a little further, just trying to, just sort of tweedling these knobs. There's. It's, it's, it was something so unfamiliar. There's almost not really a method to it. It's just trial and error with, and then you change one thing and it, oh, that's worse. Okay. So it seems like the sweet spot for D is around 50 or 55, at least given the current P and I. So with a D of 45 and 50, which is where it seems to be best, let's just tweak P a little bit. We've raised P a little bit to just see if we can find a better balance here. I'm making moves in increments of five, but it, it occurred to me afterwards that on this big quadcopter, it may be smaller increments of maybe two or three would give a more discrete results. On smaller quads, I just don't notice much difference with those small changes. So here we work P down just a little bit, trying to sort of split the difference between the last two to 53 and 60 and 70 on yaw. really happy to see that I mean as far as prop wash oscillation goes we're doing really good the inherent weight and stability of the quad is probably contributing to it sort of being able it does isn't prone to getting really bad prop wash oscillation I mean it's certainly not the quality of my tune so I start pushing it a little more maybe stop trying to solve this one issue with the throttle and just go a little easy on the throttle and just put the quad through some of its paces and to be honest it flies pretty freaking well. Here I'm starting to raise the throttle and listening for oscillation on high throttle or you know any video noise or any sign that something might be wrong at higher throttle and just start slinging it around just a little bit more. 
seems... Oh, there it is. That's the first roll. That was a full stick deflection roll. We are running at 500 degrees per second here just to sort of keep... Again, I don't want to push it until I know I can trust it. Mm -hmm. That's how I feel. You th think I'm a chicken, but you put your $1,300 into the air, you can fly it however you want. This is how I do it. <laughs> So as you can see, the sun's going down. I was losing the light, and I decided that this was about as good as I was going to get the quad to fly, and I gave it a little bit of a freestyle. Well, it's hardly a rip, but gave it a little bit of freestyle um, just to see how the quad flies. There are some people who watch this footage and say, I don't see the point. A 5-inch flies better than this, and you're not wrong. I did some high th full throttle passes, and uh, they're not in this video, but this is not faster than a 5-inch. It's not more agile than a five inch. What's the point? And the point is that, well, first of all, just it's kind of awesome just to build something enormous and fly it around. It just increases the stakes and is, I don't know, some, that's fun for some people. But also, let's not forget, people say the, uh, the only point of this is that it looks good to spectators. Well, yeah, that is, that is, you haven't misunderstood the point, you've understood it, that's the point. The point is that this is a demo machine. This is not for me to fly for myself just for fun. I'm going to fly a five inch low stakes. This is for me to, well, just show off and, and uh, certainly something to say for that. Anyway, here you go. Here's a little bit of freestyle. I'm going to keep working on this and keep trying to get it to fly as good as I can. Uh, my hope is that eventually it will fly as close to a five inch as possible, just bigger and more awesome and more sort of gut-wrenching and that's my goal but that's going to do it for this video i hope if you've stuck around i hope you've enjoyed this pit tuning if you will get a glimpse there's a full throttle oh there it was i told i thought i wasn't in this video there it is though that was a full throttle punch maybe it's, maybe it's this one yeah it's not that it's not that fast i know the x-class racers are maybe it's deceptive my GPS isn't working, so I actually can't get a speed readout. I got to get another GPS unit to put on it. But it, I, it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel, it may be deceptive because of the size. It doesn't feel fast as a five inch. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. You can watch a full build series for this quadcopter if you are rich enough and safe enough and responsible enough to do it. There's a link down in the video description of the playlist with lists of all the parts and stuff. And I just killed my battery. Yep, that was it. Uh, I, I miss. I, what 42 volts is 3.5 volts on 12 cell, but I was so interested in flying that I, um, I over discharged the battery and dropped it out of the sky. Nothing broke though. So nothing broke, nothing. Yeah. Zero damage from this whole session. Yay. That's going to do it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts about this. Is it, what do you think of beast class? Is it a waste of time or is there just, you know, is it, am I ruining the hobby? Yeah. I'll argue with you in the comments. Thanks for watching. Happy flying.